Breaking news, Halloween is not cancelled this year. So given the strange year we've been having with the pandemic, a lot of people have argued that Halloween this year is going to be cancelled. They are wrong. Los Angeles attempted to ban trick-or-treating earlier this year, and only hours later, faced with the popular outrage over their nonsense, they immediately walked that ban back. Now they're saying trick-or-treating is not recommended. I'm going to go through some of the Halloween activities that people like to do, and we're going to discuss which ones are still moving forward, which ones might be different this year. But the bottom line is, no matter what anyone says, they cannot stop us from celebrating Halloween. Probably the biggest thing that will be different this year is Halloween parties. Many of them are in fact going to be canceled as people are reluctant to engage in larger gatherings. But in lieu of large Halloween parties with dozens or hundreds of people in attendance, consider smaller gatherings for close friends and family. Platforms like Skype and Zoom will allow people to have some degree of the Halloween party experience, still manage to get some social interaction in, even though you're not physically together. One particular idea you could consider is hosting a Zoom party and watching your favorite horror movies all together while discussing in the Zoom chat. Now for me, missing out on Halloween parties is not the biggest deal. I've mentioned before on this channel, I tend not to get invited to parties that much anyway. Most of the parties I end up getting invited to end up turning into all-night chess matches, which is fun in itself, but it's not the sort of Halloween party that most people have in mind. Generally, when people are thinking Halloween parties, they're thinking of dozens or hundreds of people gathered together under one roof, drinking copious amounts of alcohol until somebody finds him or herself passed out on the floor. And while you can certainly still drink as much as you want, most of those gatherings are probably going to be cancelled for this year, unfortunately. Other types of Halloween events include parades and outdoor parties. Some of these are going to be cancelled and others are going to move forward. That's going to depend largely on the risk tolerance of the individual organizers and attendees, as well as local public health guidance and local rules. It will also depend on how prevalent the virus is in particular regions. And the best advice I can offer with regard to those types of events is consult your local public health guidance and local event organizers to determine which events are moving forward and which ones are not. One of my own favorites is the haunted house. There are many excellent haunted houses in my home state of Colorado every year. And I've been doing some checking. Some of those are moving forward with a variety of public health concessions in place. Others are not opening this year. From the research that I've been able to do, it seems like about half and half are opening or staying closed this year. So once again, check your local organizers for details. There are, in fact, some outdoor haunted houses which are more likely to be open than the indoor ones. Among those haunted houses that are opening this year, most, if not all, are taking a variety of precautions, including distancing groups even more so than usual, making hand sanitizer available to guests, requiring masks, and sanitizing everything in the house throughout the evening. Of course, the quintessential Halloween activity is children trick-or-treating. And as I mentioned at the top of this video, some localities, including Los Angeles, have attempted to ban trick-or-treating. And in fact, localities have attempted to ban trick-or-treating before, even in years when they're wasn't a pandemic, proving once again that local government is not always on our side. Regardless, some localities will attempt to ban trick-or-treating, which will raise a variety of legal issues. Putting that aside, most localities will not be banning trick-or-treating, although many government officials are cautioning against it. There are, however, ways to make trick-or-treating relatively safe. One way to make trick-or-treating safe is to construct a candy slide, much like I have done. I based my own slide on a design from Wicked Makers, and I'll post a link to their resources in the description. I've modified it a bit to fit my own needs. The idea is simply drop candy down the chute, it comes out, and you can stay six feet apart or seven feet apart or however far you're comfortable with, rather than interacting directly with the trick-or-treaters. 
Other people are using different designs of candy slides. Some people are just leaving the treats lined up on the porch for the trick-or-treaters to collect without individual contact. And other people are doing a variety of car-to-car trick-or-treating or Halloween scavenger hunt ideas. The key thing to make trick-or-treating safe is to minimize contact as much as you can, wash your hands before and after handling the treats, and of course, as you should be doing anyway, wear a mask. It is Halloween after all. And then of course there are events and traditions that simply cannot be cancelled. Of course, for instance, you're free to decorate your house however you like for Halloween, and on this channel you'll see some of the things that I have been doing this year. And of course you can watch Halloween movies, either by yourself or with close friends or family. And as I do every year, you can read some Halloween-themed books. These are the kinds of things that no one can ever argue that the government has any authority to cancel, so they remain good ways to celebrate Halloween. In addition to, and largely aligned with the common sense advice, the United States Centers for Disease Control have released their own list of low, moderate, and high-risk activities traditional for Halloween. Among the low-risk activities, they list decorating, carving pumpkins, a Halloween scavenger hunt within a single household, a virtual costume contest, and a Halloween movie night for people within your own household. Moderate risk activities, according to the CDC, include one-way trick-or-treating, or contactless trick-or-treating, small outdoor parties, outdoor costume parties, open-air, one-way, walk-through haunted forests or haunted houses, and outdoor pumpkin patches if distancing measures are observed. According to the CDC, higher risk activities include traditional trick-or-treating, crowded costume parties and indoor parties, indoor haunted houses where people may be crowded together, and hay rides or tractor rides with people who are not in your immediate household. My list was not exhaustive of the CDC's recommendations. I have posted a link to their full recommendations in the description. Of course, regardless of what the CDC says on the national scale and regardless of whatever your own local organizations and your local governments might be saying, the important thing to remember is they cannot cancel Halloween, we need to celebrate Halloween, and we will continue to celebrate Halloween, but we can do so employing some common sense virus safety guidelines. Wash your hands regularly. You should be doing that anyway. Keep some hand sanitizer on hand. Maintain reasonable distances. And of course, it is Halloween. You should be doing this anyway. Make sure that you wear a mask. And if you follow those simple, straightforward, common sense health and safety guidelines, you can celebrate Halloween almost the same way as you usually do. In the meantime, take care and stay scared.